Hey y'all, if you're a C-sharp dev, you're probably using async and await in your code, but you may not know how they exactly work under the hood. So let's focus on that in this video. So first of all, what is a task? A task uh, represents a promise of completion of certain operation. That operation may return some, si some sort of type, uh, most likely a generic type, so task of T, like here shown, and it can be awaited to retrieve result after the uh, operation is completed. It usually represents uh, some sort of I.O. operation, but it's not limited to I.O. operation, so it actually can just execute some normal code uh, in C-sharp, but uh, most likely that the most known use case is the I.O. operation, so for example, HTTP client to call some external service, uh, SQL to, I don't know, uh, query database and channel to await uh, until something is written to the channel reader and perform some sort of action after the, the channel reads something. Uh, but task does not equal async and await. So tasks were introduced before those keywords, uh, async and await were introduced to C-sharp and you could interact with tasks uh, by the method name uh, continue with. So you could just uh, append some sort of continuation after the task was completed. Before uh, those keywords async and await were introduced, you most likely knew some sort of task states. Uh, so running, faulted, run to completion and cancels were the most known ones. There are some other obscure ones, but uh, uh, with the async and await keywords introduced, you most likely don't interact with those statuses um, at all, but it is uh, pretty good to know uh, how they work exactly because task uh, really just uh, listen to some sort of event that uh, they are completed and then they return some sort of uh, state with them. So I just wanted to highlight that tasks are not magic. They are just a C-sharp class that has some, some properties and is notified once the task should be completed and then returned to the uh, code it was executing before. So, async keyword allows you to use await. It does not make your method as asynchronous by itself, but it uh, initializes state machine. So if we look into this, uh, the compilation of the C-sharp class uh, with async task and um, async method returning task, uh, it just, uh, as you see, uh, the class is compiled into uh, so several methods, uh, so it has this uh, state machine and uh, even though it does not do anything asynchronously, it just prints out hello with a delay, uh, it will uh, initialize all of this, so as you may be aware, it, it will perform some allocations and it will actually make your code slower. But if you just return If you just return task completed, it will not initialize the state machine and it will just perform your uh, code as it would uh, with the synchronous code. It would just return uh, a static uh, completed task. So it will just uh, go back right away into your method where you were awaiting quote unquote your uh, call to my method as async. So yeah. Async does not mean your method is asynchronous, but it allows you to use the uh, uh, await keyword. And await keyword actually performs asynchronous non-blocking call, freeing up your thread for the time being. So let's focus on the example on how await improves uh, things. So previously, if you were trying to, I don't know, read something from database, SQL database, you could have had to code like this. So you call something async and you wait on it. And until that IO operation is completed, the thread is blocked. You wait until the operation is completed. Once it's completed, you return to your code and execute the, the following lines. So in this example, something else. But with using the async and await, you can await your uh, asynchronous call. It creates and initializes the async state machine. And it just saves everything you need to um, complete the method. So all of the context, some variables, stuff like that. Uh, so it has the context for it. And uh, it also launches the IO operation in the background. And it uh, waits on the event of completion on that IO operation. And the one is, once it's uh, completed, it sets the result and continues uh, by taking advantage of the state machine. So it just uh, knows what to do. Uh, in the code, so it goes uh, down the line, so it executes the next line, something else. 
for the time being of the IO operation execution, it's free up to do anything else. So it just uh, doesn't take uh, more CPU or, or just allows you to handle more requests. But it is important to note that if you were to execute only one, uh, one line of code, so only one request, it would be actually slower than the non-async version because it needs to not only call the IO operation, but it also needs to initialize this async state machine and also set the result once it comes back to your thread or some other thread where it will continue with your method. But as you see, there's a huge gap in between those two calls. So you have all that time to handle additional requests. So it allows you to have more throughput in your application, so more requests, but individual requests will be a little bit slower. But if you're handling thousands of requests, this is much more beneficial to handle more than handle them faster. Uh, I also wanted to touch on some kind of uh, do's and don'ts of tasks. So I wanted to, first of all, uh, advise you to familiarize yourself with task API. So you know how to call many uh, services, external services with that by using tasks when all or task when any. So you know how they actually work and uh, how to call multiple uh, uh, other external services without uh, uh, awaiting them one by one. I also wanted to you to use the cancellation token always. So you should always uh, drill down with it uh, in your async code. So you should always reuse the one provided by, I don't know, if the HTTP context if you're working with a, an API. So, so you should reuse that. You should pass it down to the uh, lowest services that you use because uh, it can actually save you some computational time if you, uh, if the user, for example, just stops the request on his side, you won't be able to notice the fact and stop the request on your side if you don't propagate it correctly. And I also wanted you to uh, use a wait uh, to complete tasks. So don't use, never use wait. You shouldn't use that because it is uh, a blocking uh, calls. As you saw, it occupies your thread for the time being and it's much, much less efficient if you're handling multiple requests. I also wanted you to never initialize tasks using the new task. There is a factory for it and you can use that. Uh, I'll show you on the screen how, uh, for example, you could uh, initialize your new tasks uh, uh, without using the constructor because <laughs> Uh, they are starting as not uh, started tasks. So even though you create new tasks, it is not started by default. Uh, any other tasks will be started uh, by default. Uh, it's just something that they overlooked. And uh, I think it's very, very dangerous to just use the constructor. And I think if you, you see something like that, it's a sign of uh, uh, something that might go wrong. I also wanted you to do not use async modifier without the await in method. So as you saw, async uh, by itself initializes the context, uh, the state machine, and uh, it will not actually make your code asynchronous. So if you don't have any awaits in your method, it's much, much better to return a task dot completed task or something else, uh, whatever is suitable for you. Just use the cache task that they have for you. And also I wanted to have some talking points about the uh, default value for cancellation token. So should you add a, your, uh, in your methods a default value for cancellation tokens, it's up to you. I think it's much, much more preferred to never expose your methods that are asynchronous without uh, allowing for cancellation tokens because user can, if they want to uh, specify the cancellation token dot nonce, if they explicitly want not to use the cancellation token. Uh, but I think that much uh, more devs can overlook this in, uh, value and just not provide it even though they have it in their context. So I think it's beneficial to require it explicitly. And the other thing is, should you add async suffix in your method names? So this one is very personal. I think that uh, there are some use cases for it. Uh, I know that .NET team uses the async suffix, so I think I, uh, it's beneficial to follow it because on the first site you see that you should <laughs> await 
such methods when you call them but also you have the support from your IDE so it's not as uh, mandatory as I think it used to be when uh, the IDEs were not so great with this stuff uh, but personally I, I just make it for the reason of just having my code uh, look the same as uh, the C Sharp team or the .NET team so yeah in this video I wanted to highlight some um, maybe more advanced topics about uh, async and await. Uh, in the following videos I'll make uh, more uh, in-depth videos about how they actually work under the hood. This is just the first video in, in this series about async. So I hope you enjoyed it and see ya!